Okay, welcome to the Improving Corporate Actions webinar being presented as part of XBRL Knowledge Series webinar. Today's corporate actions process carries significant interpretation, timing and accuracy risks. Because of the highly manual nature of processing corporate actions messages, an entire industry has evolved to reduce these risks, resulting in significant and truly unnecessary costs. This diagram shows the current process, which we will be discussing today. Over the next 45 minutes, we will review the problems in the current corporate actions process, present a solution, and then demonstrate how that solution works in a real-world pilot. We have a number of speakers with us today who come from various organizations involved in the corporate actions pilot program for American depository receipts. And I introduce to you today Patrick Barthel, who is a director at DTCC, Tom Crane, the director of the ADR group at Citibank, Len Lipton, managing director at GlobeTax, Mike Silverance, who's the global product manager for depository receipts at BNY Mellon, and myself, Campbell Pride, the president and CEO of Expo US. Patrick, can you tell us a little bit about the corporate actions from the DTCC's perspective? Sure. A corporate action is an event initiated by a, co a public company that affects the securities that is issued. A company may use a corporate action as a way to return profits to shareholders, such as a cash dividend, or to influence the share price through a stock split or a buyback. Another example is a company deciding to restructure in order to increase profitability, in which case a merger or a spin-off may occur. The Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, or DTCC, plays a vital role in the corporate action lifecycle for the U.S. market. In addition to providing post-trade clearing and settlement services to the financial markets, DTC provides custody services for 3.5 million securities eligible at the depository, valued at almost $37.2 trillion. Those services include full lifecycle corporate actions processing of distribution events, which encompass dividends and P&I, or principal and interest payments, reorganizations, which include mandatory events such as mergers and voluntary events such as tender offers, and redemptions such as full and partial calls. In the course of providing dividend and interest payments, Dividend reinvestment and related services, DTC does business with approximately 4,000 paying and transfer agents. DTC processes all elective instructions on optional income distributions, voluntary co corporate actions, and similar activities. Much of this re requires a good deal of manual intervention, and in some cases the entire process at DTC is manual. There are systemic and operational safeguards in place to mitigate errors at DTC, but the automation that XBRL offers is an opportunity to improve efficiency and to reduce risk that this manual intervention presents. Thanks, Patrick. Now let's turn to Len Lipton at GlobeTax, who can help explain further some of the issues involved in corporate actions processing. Thank you, Campbell. This image demonstrates the problems in the process today. So looking at the diagram, it's a bit of a prey and spray strategy and what I mean by that is that the issuer makes an announcement of an impending corporate action event by issuing a press release, or in some cases, simply by alerting their transfer agent. For mandatory corporate actions events, this is fine. The investors will all enjoy the same experience. With voluntary corporate actions, however, the issuer is essentially hoping that the intermediaries and investors will get the notice of a pending event within enough time to take whatever action may be required to participate or satisfy any requirement for response, which the issuer, exchange, regulator, or taxation authority may impose for the investor to experience a positive outcome from the corporate action. So from what we've heard about the, cor the current corporate actions process, you can see that there's a highly manual nature of processing, and the vast num number of entities involved can easily lead to inaccuracies, delays, and added cost. A consortium of individuals from organizations, including the DTCC, City, Bank of New York, Mellon, and GlobeTax, that were involved in the corporate actions process came together with a goal to improve the process. 
we wanted to switch from a document-based process to a database process. We wanted to make corporate actions messages computer readable because we knew that this could make them better for end users, more functional, more timely, and ultimately more accurate. The solution we came to was to adopt the Experial Technology Standard for Corporate Actions Processing. Experial is a technology standard that is already being used for public company financial statement reporting. Experial is based on XML, which is a markup language developed by the World Wide Web Consortium. XML is a well-known standard for tagging or defining pieces of data. As an example, the number seven by itself is meaningless, but by using XML, we can tell a computer that seven represents number of buildings, for example. Using tags helps the creator of the information communicate to the user of the information exactly what each data point represents, so the end user can take that data and process it. XML takes XML and adds structure that helps standardize features of the data that are common to financial data reporting, like reporting the period, the decimals in terms of the accuracy of the numbers reported, who was the entity who reported the data, what, what unit of measure is the data being reported in, for example, US dollars, Great British pounds, what is the fact that's actually being reported, and if there are additional attributes to that fact, what are they? XPRL is a powerful tool for the reporting of corporate action data because it can give context to a single data point like the number 98 cents that you can see here. This report is a dividend announcement for a company in the Netherlands. XPRL can tell the consumer of that data about the value of 98 cents. If you look at the blue boxes surrounding the value, you can see that the 98 cents represents dividends per share. It is reported in US dollars. Um, it is reported specifically for the time period 2014, um, 4th of January. And it is reported to an accuracy of within two decimals. Looking at that information in a slightly different way, we can see how XPRL embeds information about the value of 98 cents into that piece of information. This diagram, diagram shows that XPRL tells, tells us not only the value is in US dollars, was distributed um, by an ADR depository, has two decimals, and is reporting dividends per share. But if you look at the information in green on this diagram, you can, XPRL can also tell the end user that the event is a cash-only dividend, that the entity is US-based, um, that the event is mandatory, and that it represents uh, a form of equity security and that the status of the event has been confirmed. One of the most important things that we want to capture is the entity itself. XPRL can report on the entity by relying on a particular scheme, such as the CIK, which is used by the SEC, the LEI, which is the legal entity identifier, or something like the DUNS number, which can give you an accurate reflection of who is the entity actually reporting the information about the corporate action. As I mentioned earlier, the US Securities and Exchange Commission now requires all public companies to report their periodic financial statements in an XPRL format. They use the company CIK as the identifier, so that any user of an XPRL formatted financial statement knows the name, who's actually, the name of the company who is actually reporting the information. This, this diagram here, for example, shows part of an actual, actual XPRL document. Well, typically no one would actually read this XPRL information. You can see how this XPRL, the XPRL uses tags to identify pieces of information about an individual data point. On top, you see the identifier or legal entity reporting in angled brackets, which shows BNY Mellon and the ADR depository distributing this message. In the code in the second part of the diagram, labeled dimensions, the XPRL code provides more features of the data, such as the event type, which in this case is a cash dividend, the issue type, which in this case is for an equity security, and whether the event is mandatory or voluntary. The next down line in this piece of code tells us in which market the equity is based, so you can see from the code that it's identified as the US. The last line in the dimension section describes the status of the action, which is noticed here, noted here as confirmed. 
And the last piece of information at the bottom it tells you when the event took place. So in this case, this is the, announce, the announcement date. This is labeled here. In this case, is August 19, 2013. The purpose of showing this piece of computer code is just to demonstrate how this information is, is communicated and that the underlying XPRL is actually human readable, but would be processed by normally in normal circumstances um, by a computer system. Imagine, imagine how valuable that is for the end user because it gives them all the information they need um, in a way that uh, and allows computer systems to be able to understand that information when it's transmitted. The next visual shows how XPRL works. XPRL relies on a collection of terms that are grouped together into what is called a taxonomy, which is shown on the left. The terms include could be dividends, assets, earnings per share, or other concepts, each of which has a specific, specific predefined definition. Each time we report a corporate action event, we rely on the terms and definitions in the taxonomy and build what's called an XPRL instance document that reports the actual values with qualifying information, the currency, the status, the entity reporting the corporate action, and other information if required. The corporate actions taxonomy and the individual corporate actions event instance document give the consumer of the message everything they need to know about the event, and it's all conveyed in a computer-readable format. As a good example that may help to further understand how XBRL works is a tax form. When we report taxes each year, we must report specific predefined pieces of information about our financial situation. The form, which tells us what information is needed and gives us the definition or instructions for each item, we need to report as like a taxonomy. What we actually report, such as our name, social security number, income over the past year and address, is the instance document because it's specific to our, our particular reporting situation. Here's an example of the marriage of the taxonomy, which you can see on the lower left-hand side in blue, which provides the terms or concepts and definitions, plus the instance document on the, on the right, which you can see um, in pink. This gives the descriptive information about a particular piece of data. Hopefully that has given you a good idea of what XBRL is and how it can provide a solution to the current the tangled corporate actions process. Given the problem in front of us, we wanted to show how XBRL could dramatically streamline the corporate actions process and enable straight through processing. DTC, Citi, BNY Mellon, and Globe Tax came together with XBRL US to prove out the concept of XBRL and corporate actions processing. Let's first turn to hear from Len Lipman at Globe Tax about why XBRL was proposed as a possible solution and how that pilot program came about. Thank you, Campbell. The XBRL Corporate Actions Pilot came about through some creative thinking and problem solving to improve the flow of communications from the issuer of a security down to the investor through the often complex chain of intermediaries in the custodial and securities processing infrastructure. In discussions with XBRL US, we all agreed that to gain traction for an initiative like this, we would need to prove the concept. So how could we demonstrate to a large community of widely held issuers that they should participate in a project to change their communication method and adopt a standard when they are already satisfying their legal or listing requirements to provide notice by using the traditional methods. Well, we talked about consolidation points among the issuers where we might be able to get some traction with a number of issuers all at once. The ADR, excuse me, the ADR depository model seemed a logical fit. Thanks, Len. Let's, let's learn about the specifics of the pilot program from Tom Crane at City. Thanks, Campbell. Uh, the, the ADR pilot was created to demonstrate the benefits that XBRL can offer. The ADR business was identified because there's only four depository banks, and dissemination of the dividend announcements were all being done in paper format and the consumers of the dividend announcements would receive the paper announcements and need to rekey the information into their particular system. So it was a very manual process that was risky, costly, and not effective. The XBRL technology uh, was expanded to cover ADR dividend announcements. 
And Citibank has specifically benefited from the technology, which I will discuss later. This diagram provides some insight on our view of concentration or consolidation points. The idea grew from the depository receipt product set, where over 4,000 major securities issuers from around the world are represented in depository receipt form. In the U.S., the vast majority of ADRs, as Tom mentioned a moment ago, are issued from one of four, one of four depository banks. So by only engaging with four issuers, we could cover a very large number of widely held securities. This method enabled us to work quickly, as we did not have to get a group of significant issuers to adhere to a standard, but rather in ADRs, we found a concentration of activity with players who recognize the value proposition of implementing a standardized method of communication. GlobeTax's position here is that of a common service provider for withholding tax processing to each of the four depository banks. In our role, we consume thousands of ADR dividend announcements each year from the depositaries and then issue enhanced notifications known as important notices through DTCC as the depositaries agent. These important notices provide DTC participants and others with detailed instructions for participation in the voluntary portion of the event, typically gaining relief from withholding taxes on those dividend payments. In short, Globe Tax acts as a further consolidation point for many ADRs. Important notices are obviously unique to the specific event, but they also possess two important attributes for use in this pilot. Number one, to a large degree, the events are regular occurrences. Number two, the dividend events have relatively consistent requirements for, dis for participation. That consistency lends itself to standardization and the implementation of standards. Globe Tax has worked with and on behalf of the depositaries and with DTCC over many years to standardize the process flow from taking the depository issued dividend announcement and further enhancing that to create an important notice which DTCC publishes to its participants, as well as making available the election windows at DTCC. However, the process would always be manual from that point on because the announcements are published as a PDF. That, of course, requires a person to read and interpret the announcement in order for any bank or broker to then take action on it. Thanks, Lynn. Mike, can you address some of the issues with ADR processing from BNY Mellon's perspective? Certainly. Uh, well, this slide outlines the BNY Mellon ADR current state and the entities and parties we interact with in our process of moving ADR corporate action data or information from the issuer in the local market to the ADR investor. It also outlines our desired state, which was not eliminating the parties involved in the process, but the potential for those parties to lose the integrity of the original data or information while also allowing them, like GlobeTax, to enhance the data as they as their processing required. To BNY Mellon, it should be transparent to the ADR investor that the original data was enhanced and that the integrity of the original data is still intact. So how do we get from the desired state to the current state? Well, we saw this as a four-pronged issue. One was the data information coming at us from the local market. Two, the enhancements to that data that our processing required. Three, the data we were sending out the door in the ADR market. And four, the consumption of that data that we were providing by the other parties in the ADR market and their processing and enhancement to that data before it reached the underlying ADR investor. So in 2006, we decided to tackle the first two issues. And we started to build what we called our corporate action automation system. This allowed us to bridge the ordinary issuer in the local market and all of the parties involved on that side of the chart, so the local custodians, stock exchanges, common security depositaries, uh, some strategic partners we had in the local market, uh, the register and transfer agents in that market, and also some market data providers. This was a huge multi-year project for us. However, we knew that once we completed this half of the desired state, we would accomplish um, having a golden source data coming at us uh, from the local market and giving golden source data into the depository receipt market. 
So that brings us back to the first question above. How does the ADR, depository processing, interact with other parties? Well, we were sending corporate action announcements to one of our exchanges, New York Stock Exchange, uh, via an FTP file format. We were manually key punching data into another uh, FINRA's website. And prior to late 2012, we were emailing a PDF announcement to all of the other parties in the ADR market. What are some of the issues, bottlenecks, and costs? Well, creating files in different formats for all of the players in the ADR market and sending them via an FTP, and each one of them creating a file format, the same file format and creating FTPs downstream, becomes a technology build for each party entity, which is a huge cost. Then there is the cost of maintaining, updating, and testing every time there's a change to one of the entities or party systems. Keep punching data that is already valid on your database into a website adds unnecessary labor costs, becomes a processing bottleneck, adds time to the process, and you lose the data integrity to possible key punch errors. Sending PDF announcements, as Len talked about, adds labor costs to the downstream parties, and you also lose the integrity of the data at each touch point. So when we were asked to join the pilot, we jumped at the chance, as we saw the XBRL corporate action taxonomy as a way to get to the second half of our desired state. We believe that utilizing the taxonomy, we can then take our golden source data and move it downstream. The downstream parties could then consume that data, process, enhance it if required, and so send it further downstream using XBRL or SWIFT, and so on until it reached the ADR investor. And that would complete our desired state. Since 2012, all of all of the parties in the depository receipt market have been receiving the BMY Mellon DR cash announcement via XBRL. And we have been posting those same announcements to our depository receipt website. I'll stop here as Tom, Patrick, and Len are going to go through the, the before and after XBRL flows in the depository re receipt market and their processing. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Let's hear from City DTCC, and GlobeTax on how their current processes work for corporate action, actions processing. Tom? Okay, very good. So the way it works from an ADR perspective, the dividend is announced in the local market. The issuer issues a press release, and the custodian for the depository bank provides a swift message. The depository bank then receives that information, needs to interpret the details of the dividend. The information is then keyed into our mainframe computer. And a web-based tool allows us to generate a PDF of the dividend announcement. There's a required maker and checker step where the terms are again reviewed. And after that has been completed, a copy of the PDF announcement is attached to an email and distributed to the marketplace. The various participants, consumers in the marketplace receive a copy of that. And again, there is a need in many instances to rekey the dividend terms into their own systems. Finally, the depository bank, if the company is a New York Stock Exchange listed ADR, is required to enter the dividend terms into the New York Stock Exchange's eGov Direct system. If it's an OTC issuer, again, the dividend terms are entered into FINRA's website. As you can see, the process is extremely manual, very costly, and susceptible to errors. So at DTCC, uh, we received the announcement via email from one of the four issuer banks. And after opening and analyzing the PDF attachment, the operator manually enters the announcement information into the DTC system. Each depository bank has its own format for their PDF, so there's really no standardization there. Once the information is entered, it immediately hits the DTC Participant Terminal System, or PTS, and is reported in end-of-day files that are created that evening. So there's obvious risks here. Key data could be overlooked in the manual process. There's possibility of a keystroke error, and there's a time lag as the, as the email itself could be misdirected. So as you can see, it's a fully manual process, which offers a lot of opportunity 
to risk reduction via automation and standardization. And XBRL offers that opportunity. Thanks, Patrick. In this workflow, Globe Tax's role is to take the dividend announcement from the depository and create an important notice, which DTCC then publishes for its participants and others. This involves first determining whether the dividend announcement has withholding tax implications relating to the payment, then, if so, rekeying the dividend event into our system, and then applying the appropriate instructions for which we maintain market-by-market -market templates. The process to create an important notice in a manual environment takes on average just over an hour for each actionable dividend event. Keep in mind that Globe Tax processes somewhere between 11 and 1,200 important notices every year. Now let's consider how the corporate actions process was changed when XBRL was used to format these same ADR messages. First we'll hear from Tom Crane at Citibank and then from Patrick at the DTCC on how their process changed. Tom? Yes, using XBRL's taxonomy and mapping tool, Citibank is able to create an XBRL formatted dividend announcement. After the dividend announcement has been created, we load that announcement into XBRL's validator tool. If the message is in good order, Citibank then distributes the message to DTC through a direct link that was developed known as an MQ interface. DTC is able to inform the depository bank that the message is in good order or not. If the message is fine, it's straight through processing. The dividend is then machine readable by DTC. What Citibank is also doing is we're downloading a copy of the message to a secured server for certain individual parties like GlobeTax, and we're also adding the XBRL formatted messages to our website. Patrick. Thanks, Campbell. Thanks, Tom. So with XBRL, the DTC system can now consume the XBRL message in real time and feed it into the backend application, ultimately creating an announcement. Since the XBRL taxonomy is aligned with ISO 20022, which is a format standard DTC has adopted, DTC is able to leverage like taxonomies to aid in higher levels of automation. This manifests itself by DTC taking that XBRL message and converting it into an ISO 20022 message for real-time announcements to its clients. In effect, DTC has been able to prove that true straight-through processing is possible when announcing an event to the market, from issuer to investor. Thanks, Patrick. Lynn, can you tell us about the changes in the process for GlobeTax with XBRL? Certainly. Thank you, Campbell. This slide provides more detail on GlobeTax's contribution to the process and highlights some of the benefits we have seen by implementing XBRL. So walking through the process flow, uh, on the top left, we received the dividend announcement from the depository in XBRL. Contrary to the old process, this has enabled us to automate the qualitative validation that used to be a manual verification process where we confirm all of the dividend data. The format is now confirmed and the record dates and pay dates are updated and a new event is automatically created in our system. That goes into an approvals queue which, once approved, moves to our proprietary security master file. We then enhance the corporate actions announcement with the tax treatment information I spoke about a few minutes ago uh, using the appropriate rules templates. As I described earlier, we worked with the XBRL US team to round out the taxonomy to be used for this type of corporate actions event. In comparison to the hour plus that it used to take us to create each important notice, since the implementation of XBRL, We've shaved that time down to approximately 10 minutes per notice with far lower risk of errors due to the automation we've achieved. So taking a couple of steps back, a dividend payment is a relatively straightforward mandatory corporate action event. An investor or holder of a security is going to receive a dividend if they hold the stock over a given date, period. Also, 
fairly easy to automate based on the mandatory nature of the event using the then existing taxonomy. What Globe Tax's involvement has done is to take the mandatory event, which could be automated and essentially enabled, our, our involvement essentially enabled the voluntary aspect of the corporate action to be automated as well. In other words, you're receiving a dividend that will be taxed. Are you eligible for reduction or relief from taxation? How must you elect? What are your options? What are the cutoff times? Our involvement has allowed for the automation of the voluntary piece. Straight through processing within the corporate actions chain has never been done before to this degree. Thanks, Lance. So let's talk about the results and lessons learned during this pilot program. First, let's hear from Citi. Tom? Yes, I just want to touch on that. Um, beginning in, in February of 2013, Citibank began transmitting XBRL formatted messages to DTC. In October of 2012, we began downloading messages on a secured server for Globe Tax and other interested parties. Importantly, first quarter of 2014, Citibank will begin transmitting XBRL formatted messages to FINRA. And this is a very important development for Citibank. So I mentioned earlier, there's a large number of ADR clients that are OTC. By FINRA receiving the XBRL messages, it eliminates Citibank from having to rekey all the information into their website. So there's cost savings at Citi and straight through processing at FINRA. Um, Now, I'll touch on some of the lessons in the next slide that Citibank has, has learned. A few things, what we learned is to keep things stable throughout the pilot. Although additional versions of the corporate action taxonomy were being released during the development, we completed all development and testing using the original version of the taxonomy. It was very important for the pilot to have a validator tool. So that was a very, very important development. And then finally, ensuring a secure testing environment was critical as well. Now let's hear from Lynn Lipton at Globex. First, the good news. We have proved the concept. The pilot worked. Each of the participants in the pilot has experienced positive results efficiency gains, and risk reductions. Since February of 2012, between Citi and Bank of New York Mellon, they've created 9,324 dividend announcements across a number of securities and a number of different markets. Globe Tax has consumed over 1,850 announcements for 445 unique securities domiciled across 22 different countries. DTCC has processed 439 dividend announcements to date, and given the benefits that we've all seen, we expect these numbers not to stay at this level. We believe that they will increase fairly rapidly from here. Tom and Mike, can you tell us how City and Bank BNY Mellon make these corporations' messages available to the general public? Yes, thank you, Campbell. I just wanted to indicate where someone can find the XBRL formatted messages. So if you go to Citibank's website, and the first slide here is showing our website, www.city.com slash dr. The next slide shows the specific section that covers dividend announcements. So all of our dividend announcements are here. Flipping to the next slide, this is a list of all dividends for a particular letter of the alphabet. And then finally, we're going to look at one specific issuer, in this case, Mitsubishi Chemical. When you go to this slide, you'll see two icons. And then going on to the next slide, you'll see the first icon is the example of the PDF of the dividend announcement. And then finally, the XBRL message itself. And this, is, this could be helpful 
interested parties can convert these messages, the experimental messages from the website to their own system and test consumption. Mike, could you um, tell us where we, people can get the BNY Mellon? Yes, by using, utilizing the um, URL that's at the top here, uh, they can come right into the distribution DSF uh, corporate action, BNY Mellon corporate action announcements. Uh, there's all, all types of searches on the panel, region, country, industry. They can also search by an issuer, a use of the category uh, for different date ranges. If they just scroll down on that, uh, they'll wind up going to the last dividend that we announced uh, and then so on down the road. So uh, we have one out there for February 2011, January uh, 31st. Um, as I said, they can search by uh, also by alphabet. So we wind up uh, searching in multiple different ways. Currently, we have over 4,248 announcements out on this page. Uh, if, if you can go back one slide. Uh, if they click on where it says cash dividend announcement, where it says details, they'll be brought to this page, which is the next page, uh, Campbell. Uh, and then by clicking on the PDF, they would see the PDF information. I did not uh, put that in the, the presentation here, but if I, they click on the uh, blue icon, it will bring up the XBRL message. We also uh, give them some pertinent information right here on the screen, uh, letting them know who the DR issue was, what country, uh, record date, uh, payable dates, uh, what status, and also the, the net dividend rate on the same this one panel. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Tom. Now let's hear how the pilot program has affected the corporate actions process at DTC. Thanks, Campbell. So as I've mentioned, prior to XBRL, there was a fully manual process for these select ADR event types in which a PDF was sent via email, launched by an operator, and then entered into the system. So obviously that offers a number of risks that key data might be overlooked and that the email announcement itself might be misdirected to the wrong box. Of course, manual input errors and then the lack of timeliness and the time lag from the time that that actual document is received and then entered into the system. So as we've mentioned, the XDRL process has really automated, standardized, and streamlined this effort by having DTC receive that XBRL tagged instance into its system with the pertinent tagged fields being consumed by the DTC system. Since that taxonomy is aligned with ISO 20022, DTC is able to automatically feed it into its back-end application and announce that event to customers without an operator ever touching that event. In addition, DTC assigns a unique corporate action identification number, or, or CAID, which is carried through the event's lifetime, and it then enters into a whole other process of ISO 20022, which offers great standardization for the U.S. and global markets. So the obvious benefits that we see here are greater straight-through processing. The standardization in the fact that all issuers are using a standardized taxonomy rather than these different PDFs. There's also a foundation for usage of XBRL for other products and for other events beyond the ADR space. When we get there, there will be great cost savings in terms of manual effort needed to process and collect data. And being able to replace those manual processes with automation, which is a big win in terms of risk reduction and efficiency for DPC and for the industry. Thank you to all our speakers who have shown us how XBRL is improving corporate actions processing for, for ADR securities by moving from a paper-based approach to allowing to using data to allow straight through processing. If you're interested in learning more or getting involved in the pilot or future product pilots, please email us or visit our website at XBRL US. Thank you.